It seems daily you hear of a university removing funding from diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. On May 23rd, the UNC Board of Governors became one of them. Yeah, they removed the funding, then eventually they removed the entire program itself, which leads a lot of people to ask the question, is DEI dying? Well, the answer really kind of depends on who you ask. After George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis four years ago, one big push across the country became an increased interest in diversity, equity, and inclusion programs from colleges to corporations. A lot of companies made a lot of commitments. In fact, in a 2023 letter to corporate leaders, the Congressional Black Caucus talked about companies who pledged, quote, money, resources, and time to address racial, economic inequities across the country. They implored those leaders to, quote, reaffirm their commitments to DEI and reiterate their dedication to upholding these values in their daily decision-making processes. This issue, though, has and continues to be a political football. Just in the past couple of weeks, Lieutenant Governor and Republican gubernatorial candidate Mark Robinson talked about it. Everybody talks about something called DEI. I hear it about it a lot on, on the school board when we're in, the, in school board meetings. I hear it about it in every quarter. DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. And it sounds nice, but we all know it's wrecking systems all across the nation, all across the state. All is in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? And one month ago, the UNC Board of Governors did more than just talk. They first diverted millions of dollars away from the program and then put that into public safety. And then they voted to repeal the policy altogether, cutting diversity programs and jobs at its 17 schools. The policy will neither impact classroom instruction or university research, nor will it dismantle student organizations or cultural centers. This country is fractured. I sat down with North Carolina NAACP President Deborah Maxwell to talk about DEI and its future. There are some people who think that DEI is giving people of color, specifically people who look like me, an unfair advantage. When UNC made their decision to kill DEI, the NAACP took action, or they tried to. You all wrote a, a strongly worded letter to the UNC system about their recent yes. decision. What what came of that letter? Did anything happen? Not even a response. Not one? They didn't even I did not see a response or an acknowledgement. Surprising? Not in this day and age right now, unfortunately. But it's clearly not just North Carolina. In fact, just a week before UNC, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill that bans DEI initiatives in public colleges. He said after the way it's been implemented across the country, DEI is best viewed as standing for discrimination, exclusion and indoctrination. Maxwell, however, says it's that kind of thinking that's simply not true. She says maybe why increase DEI after George Floyd rose is the very reason why it seems to be slowly dying. It, it was offered to appease people. Okay. I truly think it was offered to appease because after George Floyd, a number of cities, not mine, suffered um, destruction, economic issues and things like that. So those things are not occurring now, and so that might be why. Still, others would argue DEI is in fact not dying, but instead corporate leaders are quietly keeping it alive. According to a survey by a company called Littler, employers remain committed to DEI with almost 57 percent even growing their efforts over the past year, despite that nearly same proportion, some 59 percent, saying that backlash has increased since the Supreme Court's decision on affirmative action in June of 2023. The NAACP, though, is hopeful. I don't think it will die totally. There are some organizations in the corporate sector who are committed to making sure that they are diverse. What likely will last, the debate over whether DEI is necessary or not. Now, this is something that is happening from the state level to the federal level. In fact, just a week ago, Senate Republicans introduced a bill uh, called the Dismantle DEI Act of 2024. It's actually led uh, by Representative Michael Cloud of Texas and Senator J.D. Vance from Ohio. It's a move that would remove all federal DEI programs and NDEI-related funding for agencies, contractors, organizations, and accreditation agencies that get government money.